what are the community engagement responsibilities under the new Act and when are they required? So the community engagement responsibilities under the new Act um, are really, really important and they link to the integral and strategic work of council. Um, so it starts with the adoption of your community engagement policy by the 1st of March 2021, um, that will then in articulate how you're going to develop your community vision, your council plan, your asset plan, your financial plan embedded in deliberative engagement. So having that strong conversation with your community that is truly representative to enable your documents to be fully informed by what your community is asking for. And that leadership comes from the mayor in leading those um, events that will translate into those really, really important strategic documents that embed the vision of the community into council's work. So Kerry Thompson, why do you think the community engagement policy is so important? Oh, for a couple of reasons, Chris. So it's one of the first um, policies that the new council get to work on. Um, for 2021 and that'll absolutely set that'll be the fabric that policy on community engagement will be the absolute fabric about how you work with your community over the next four years so absolutely vital so it will actually set um, your sort of um, engagement your deliberative engagement with the community as you work through some key strategic documents and they include the the vision, the budget, the asset plan, and um, the council plan. But I think it's absolutely fundamental to know that the community is aware there is a policy and they understand how you're going to engage with them. And um, in the new act, this is fundamental around del um, deliberative engagement, meaning really genuine deep dive engagement with the community. Stephen Cooper, what does deliberative engagement mean to you and who can be involved in those processes? Chris, I think um, to answer that question, you really need to think about when is deliberative engagement required? And, and put simply, the Act requires that in the development of the key strategic documents of the organisation, that it should embark on a deliberative engagement process. So for mine, deliberative implies deliberation. It's not... It's not a quick, you know, put the ad in the paper and, and on the council website and see what comes back. It's a deeper level of engagement where there is an expectation that the community, and we'll talk about who that is in a minute, the community will have the information that's necessary to inform their response to the council. It may take longer. It probably depends on the resources of the organisation and the process at hand. But it is a much deeper dive in, into the issues than a quick sort of tick and flick consultation. And that expectation that you talk about, it, it's not just an expectation arising from the Act. There's a community expectation these days for that deeper level of engagement to happen too, isn't there? I think that's a long-term trend, Chris. You're quite right that, um, you know, in years gone by, the community would have felt that they elected the organisation to make decisions or they elected the council to make decisions. And there's still an element of that, that, you know, we can't exhaust the community with um, ongoing consultation or death by consultation. So it's not saying, it's not saying consult on everything, but the community now do expect, or communities generally do expect that where decisions by councils and elected bodies are made, that they, the responses will be based on consultation processes. I think the other part of it, Chris, is that when we're consulting, and again, part of that deliberative engagement um, element is that we're consulting with the whole community so that the council needs to make sure in its oversight role that all sectors of the community are picked up, all ages, geographic levels, various socioeconomic groups, that in fact the consultation reflects the makeup of the community. Is it worth also pointing out that a council's community engagement policy and process needs to itself undergo a community engagement process? That's a fabulous point, Chris, and exactly right, because how can a council expect a community to engage in consultation if the community or those who are really interested haven't been given the opportunity to understand how the council is actually going about that, that process? There's notions of you know, perceived fairness in that that will actually build trust in the community um, that the council actually did embark on that process. 
So Hannah, what support can local government Victoria provide to the sector in relation to these community engagement responsibilities? So local government Victoria has been working really, really closely with the sector through co-design processes around community engagement. There's a number of fronts that we're working on. We've had some great sessions just in the last week with CEOs and leaders at councils about their role in community engagement and how they will support their councillors to undertake this role. We're looking at establishing a community of practice through IAP2 around community engagement, and that's well advanced. Um, and we've workshopped and co-designed some supporting tools for council in relation to community engagement, such as things around how do you scale deliberative engagement that fits your council and increases also the understanding of deliberative engagement and what it really means. Um, we'll continue to work on those and support and work with councils about the questions they have, about what they need to actually truly embed this type of engagement with their communities. Um, we know it's not going to happen overnight and it's going to be an iterative process. So we're not expecting um, the kind of diamond response in every first deliberate engagement um, event, but we would like to see the practice build over the years. How much change do you think is involved in this? Or is it a big departure from what we're used to in local government? So Chris, I think um, the departure is it's now absolutely required where I think councils have done, been doing this for a long time and have done it really well. But I think this is making it absolutely clear it's a must. It's not um, just in case, you know, a council has done it well in the past, all councils need to do this. And I think it's really important to remember community engagement is not static. So there's always change in this place. So back to the policy, it's really important that it's high principle because as your community change, they'll want to be engaged in different ways. And it may be the topic, it means you take a different approach to it. So I think you're going with the attitude that there's change right through um, an engagement process because you should evaluate what worked, what didn't work, what we did do different. And that's why a policy is really important. Um, and just remember again, it's going to be fundamental how you go about that to set that strategic direction for the council, either four years or 10 years with those new strategic documents that the council must put together. Mm -hmm.